Innovate Healthcare. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, the leading cause of cancer death globally. The five-year survival rate for lung cancer is only 15%, and despite its high incidence and major advances in treatment, awareness around the disease remains dangerously low. I'm a fit and active person and really led a healthy life. I never smoked in my whole life. Actually, I'm not a non-smoker, I'm an active anti-smoker. And while practicing for the Berg River Canoe Marathon, I developed a chronic cough that I treated myself. I had x-rays taken of my chest and on the x-rays it showed that I had a lesion in my right lung that was most probably lung cancer. That was absolutely a total shock to me. Most lung cancer patients are diagnosed when the disease is at an advanced stage and metastasized or spread elsewhere in the body. The signs and symptoms of lung cancer can be very varied. They can obviously arise within the chest, causing problems like a cough. One could cough up blood, which is often the most dramatic symptom and the one that really makes people come to the doctor. But unfortunately, there are some others that are a little more subtle. Patients can have increasing shortness of breath. They can have pain in their chest. And then they can, of course, also have symptoms that are not related to the chest at all. For example, they can have a sore hip, and also a very common symptom is loss of weight. As you can see on this model, lung cancer can occur in any part of the lung. It can be peripheral or it can also be central. When it's central, it can involve the airways. When it involves the airways, this is when it causes a cough and it also unfortunately can cause a little bit of bleeding into the airway which then makes people cough up blood. There are a number of different types of lung cancer. They are commonly grouped into two main groups, the non-small cell lung cancer and the small cell lung cancers. Up until a few years ago, these were all treated exactly the same. There have been some exciting advances more recently, and we are now treating different types of lung cancers differently. For example, we've had the introduction of biological agents, and they are used in non-smokers and smokers, but they really have very exciting results predominantly in non-smokers. It was terrible of these x-rays and told me that, you know, it's lung cancer, it, because he's actually the, the healthy one in the family, the fit one and doing everything right. So it was wonderful when they told us about this biological treatments because the difference is, you know, he can eat, his appetite is fine and he's not that tired all the time and it's like being normal. Some types of biological treatment help the body's own immune system while others stop the growth and spreading of cancer cells directly. In the right patient, targeted therapy is better than chemotherapy, but also in the right patient, chemotherapy is better than targeted. So it's very important that we are now introducing what we call individualized or personalized treatment. And we're trying to understand a little more about the genetics of the cancer so that we can actually earmark the correct treatment for the right patient. I think even if you've got lung cancer and you've got a metastasis, you still have a chance in life to get better or to have a good quality of life with the current treatment that is available. Now that there's hope for him, it's wonderful. And you look to life quite differently. He was so busy, always working, working, coming back at night so late. And now we spend time together and we're doing things that we always wanted to do. And that's what's so wonderful about this new treatment is that he can still enjoy life with us now. With increased awareness and promising new treatments, lung cancer patients can afford to have a more optimistic outlook on life. We innovate healthcare. Getting the right screening test at the right time is the best thing anyone can do for their health because screening tests find disease early before symptoms occur when they're able to be treated more effectively and your survival rate goes way up.
Since its humble beginnings in Melbourne, Australia, Movember has grown to become a truly global movement, <clears throat> encouraging all men to screen for the most common male cancers. Prostate cancer being the second most common cancer in men after skin cancer and testicular cancer, the most common cancer in men between 15 and 40. It's not a smiling matter, I think this particularly is, but whether it's doing a PSA blood test or a self-examination for unusual lumps on your testicles, the idea is to catch cancer early before it catches you. 